and uh, praying in the Spirit, praying in understanding. And different ones afterwards came to me and told me that the presence of God was so strong on them. Different ones had said that uh, they felt His presence, they felt different things they were feeling. See, because God has called us to create an environment for His presence. He, he, he needs to be invited. The Bible even says, I, I stand at the door and knock. What is that? It's somebody that knocks at your door. See, the devil likes to just barge into your door. He's, a, he's what you call, what are those ones that, that break into your home? Home invasion, don't they? That's, that's the devil. He, he's a home invader. He, he just breaks right in, barges in, and just causes an upheaval in your home. And, and violates you there. But see, Jesus doesn't do that. He, he, he knocks. And he's constantly knocking at our door, the heart of our, uh, of our, uh, the door of our heart. Wanting to fellowship. That's what it's all about, really. It's fellowship. And we have a tendency to be in a, in a place where, where I, want, I want God to do this. I want God to do that. I want Him to change this person. I want Him to change this situation. I want Him to... It just it goes on. But then we have our list. And all He wants to do is just fellowship. Just, just simple fellowship. And... Um, we go and, and, and we have this list because we're, we're, our minds, our hearts, is in the wrong place. Our hearts need to be connected to God so we can see what we're, we're believing Him for. We can see it transpire because God wants to use us as vessels to change the way we view life and begin to see it through His eyes and how He sees it. So then when we do that, then we can operate with faith. That's what God wants to do. So now we don't be, we're not no longer beggars in believing God for what He said, what we want to see happen. Now we have an operation of faith to know. So as we believe God and we stand believing Him and making our petitions known to Him and believing Him, what happens is that at that point we continue to have fellowship with God relationship and that's all that's all God wants now last week I, I, I began to start talk about uh, being partakers of God's kingdom but I think I'm going to stop there for a moment put a time out um, because um, there's, there's going to be, of course, the, the women are here, but also the, uh, there's going to be Mother's Day too, so it's going to be different disruptions. But anyways, I never got to my first verse, anyway, my first uh, uh, reference, scripture reference. I just took off and just started ministering in regards to partaking of the kingdom, of God's kingdom. So, I'm going to turn this a little bit, and I'm going to talk about the, because it seems like it kept coming to me. That's why it's amazing that, in fact, in fact go ahead and turn to your Bibles to Matthew eleven twenty. Matthew eleven twenty. You know, oftentimes, and this happens, that if you pray in the Spirit, the Bible says that you're praying mysteries. Praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. Uh, Jude uh, Jude 20, I believe, that it, it says there, uh, praying, uh, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Well, I did a, I did a study on that. And that's the same experience that the day of Pentecost took place in, uh, in um, Acts chapter, chapter 1. Verse 8. It says, You shall receive power. Now, the Holy Spirit, and the same thing took place on chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples of those 120, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. So when Jude talks about it there in Jude 20, he says, Beloved, building up yourselves. Now he's not talking about talking to the sinner. He says, Beloved. He's talking to the Christian. So, Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. That's praying in tongues. So now let's say you don't pray in tongues. Well then, how do you get built up? That's why we're always, we're always grasping for prayer. We're always grasping for this. We get, we get desperate. We get, we get sidetracked. We get, we get uh, uh, disengaged from what we're supposed to be doing. And, and, and we get moved by the things that we see. And we get torn down. And God wants us to be built up. So how are we going to get built up if we don't pray in the Spirit? Paul says, I pray in tongues more than you all. Now, he's, he said that in the times that he was setting things into order at the Corinthian church because they were abusing tongues. They were abusing the gifts. And so what happens is that many, many pastors, when, when they see certain things that get up and it's out of their control, they say, you know what, it's better just to shut it down and it's not for us today. You know, it's not for today. And it is for today. The things of the Spirit is for today. You can't get people saved without the Holy Spirit. You can't get people healed without the Holy Spirit. You can't get people set free without the Holy Spirit. So we need that the Holy Spirit have access uh, uh, in His way, in His will, not the way we want Him. And now we want to turn Him on and turn Him off. We want Him to be turned on. And turn Him on in your life. In your life. Turn Him on. And keep him on. And then come and come to church and stay on. See, because not only does the Holy Spirit work through us, the Holy Spirit also reveals to us. He, he, his job is to reveal Jesus to us, the character of God to us. His job is to reveal the truth to us. So we don't just read a whole bunch of words. And you know why we get bored? Or a lot of Christians get bored it, when they read the word. It's like, man, you know, I, mean, I just don't understand it. It's because they're not, they don't believe the Holy Spirit in their lives can give them understanding because they're not allowing the fullness of the Spirit to manifest through their lives. That's the reason why the Holy Spirit wants to get a hold of your tongue and pray in the Spirit. You see, we always let something else get a hold of our tongue. People sure know how to cuss. When they get upset, what comes out of your tongue? You know, all kinds of curses, cursing and stuff. Hopefully it's not, but, you know, that's what happens oftentimes with, with humans where they don't, they don't put a watch on their, on their tongue and stuff. And so here, the Holy, God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason why oftentimes it, it is one of the most, um, how would you say, con controversial in the church. And it shouldn't be. Man made it controversial that you pray in the Spirit. No, no, that's not for, it, it needs an interpreter. No, that, it, there's two things. There's the, gifts, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit to speak, in, to, to speak in tongues and for an interpreter. But then there's a praying in tongues. It doesn't require an interpreter. Now, oftentimes you can be the interpreter because when you're in your private time and you pray in the Spirit, you pray in tongues, you'll end up praying in English too. So you'll go from tongues to English, tongues to English. You're, you're, you're interpreting it. You see, God wants that free access, the Holy Spirit to have that free access in our lives. And so when you come to church, you're able to flow. So we say, okay, let's all, let's all pray in the Spirit. And you're able to just, just engage. Praise the Lord. And when you're at home, there's oftentimes when you pray in the Spirit, you can pray into different languages. I, I pray different, different languages that come out of my mouth. And I can't make that happen. I just let it, let it happen. See, you can stop it because I'm sure I don't want that. You don't have to have it. The only thing is, you don't get the depth because the Bible says that it's speaking mysteries. There are mysteries. And the mysteries are hidden from the unbeliever. It is revealed to the believer, but the believer needs help to have an understanding of truth. 
because he's the helper to unfold those things that are mysterious. Well, that's why when Christians say, you never know what God's going to do, he's, he's mysterious. No, no, he's not mysterious to the believer. And the reason why he's mysterious to the believer and those that talk that way is because they're not seeking. They're more interested in other things in life that got their attention. And God knows that. So why would he reveal mysteries to you? Why would he reveal another side of himself? Because you're not going to obey anyways, so why would he show you? So he, it still remains a mystery, so that's why there's Christians say, oh, God is so mysterious, you never know what he's going to do. Well, God, and, and God wants us to be in the dark. And the Bible calls, in fact, Jesus says, you are children of light. You are the light of the world. So how can we be in darkness? But we remain in darkness when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the mysteries. It's called the mysteries of the gospel. But the mystery of the gospel has been revealed to us. One of the mysteries that have been revealed to us that a lot of Christians don't operate in, and I'm going to speak on it before, and I'm going to do a series on it one day, and that is authority. The authority over the devil. What we find out is a lot of Christians that are living under their circumstances instead of over their circumstances. So why? They don't know their authority. It's a mystery. Well, God, take this away. God, remove this mountain. And they bring songs like that. Uh, there's a song that's saying, God, if you don't remove the mountain, then I'll be all right. What do you mean? Be content? The devil would like you to be content. Oh, I guess it didn't happen. I guess that's what God wants. Really, when God just said, I've given you authority, he goes, you say to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea. And it shall obey, it says. But the only reason why it doesn't obey is because there's doubt. So what do you got to do? See, the world will feed your doubts. What you got to do is feed your faith. And feeding your faith is done through the Word. But you won't receive faith until the, you allow the Holy Spirit to help you get understanding of the Word. And when He gives you understanding of the Word, now your eyes are open. And then you be, and see, the entrance of His Word gives light. So now you become light. So really what you do, this is what happens supernaturally. You become truth. So when people see you, the way, the way you walk, you're walking in truth. You're walking in integrity. Praise God. See, so you're not trying to, you're not trying to be a Christian. You are one. You're not trying to get free. You are free. See, that's faith. See, because faith is always now. Praise the Lord. See, now, let's look at something here in Matthew chapter 20, because I can keep going on. I wanted to say something here. Read some scripture. Matthew chapter, let's see, chapter 11. Yes, verse 20. Now, it said here, it says here, then he began, Jesus, began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done. Because they did not, what? They didn't repent. Okay. Now, it goes on to say all the things of the cities there. God was disappointed with them. Now, here's what he says in verse 25. Jump at 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent. People that think they're wise, they're smart, they're intelligent. He says, I hid in these things from them. And have revealed them to who? Babes. 
Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things, not some things, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And then we stop there. That's what happens. That's the way we live. The Father knows the Son. The Son knows the Father. Oh, well. You know, you never know what God's going to do. You know, His ways are higher than our ways, which is true. But He's been given, in the New Testament, He's been given us the privilege to know His ways. So when we know His ways, then we can walk in His ways. Amen. See, why would God hold back His ways and then tell us to be obedient? How can we be obedient if we don't know what His ways are? See, we've got to stop and think. So therefore, see, God's not going to have us be accountable for something we don't know. That's why the ministry of the Word is so vital for us to hear it and hear it and hear it over and over and over again. Because what is happening is this. Our mind is getting renewed and in the same process, it is rewiring, being rewired again. And we used, I've studied parts of the, of the brain and, and what they say about the brain. And that it is, your brain can be rewired no matter what has happened. If you had any kind of PTSD or anything, any kind of trauma in your life, your brain can be rewired because the only reason why you have triggers is because your, your, your brain is still wired to the incidents, situations, trauma. And so... Now God has given us his word to rewire that and to bring truth. And the truth, the Bible says, sets us free. It sets us free. See, so what happens is this. we got to put God in his position of where he is at. He's on the throne. Jesus is in the right hand of the Father. Now he has given us the Holy Spirit to show us the mightiness of their character. The mightiness. So when we're when we're we're in a situation in our lives, a negative situation, don't know how to get around it. We got the mountain there in front of us. Now we can go, and as we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us the truth of God, because He goes to say here, what is it? He says. The Father knows the Son, the Son knows the Father, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. Who does He choose? Huh? He chose us. Now, He's chosen all that have received Christ. He's chosen all to reveal His will. It has not just been given to pastors, evangelists, pastor, teacher, all those prophets, apostles. No, it's been given to the body, the church. Oh, God, God, uh, Pastor, what is God saying? What is God saying? No, God's talking to you. You're just too distracted with life. So now you, wanna, you want somebody else to pay the price for them to go before God to have a relationship with Him instead of, in, instead of you, which you need to do because you got too busy with life and you let everything else take your time away. Amen. I've been told, he says, told this, that, you know, nobody can live the way you live. And because you live that way because of the call. The Bible says we're all called. So what is it? The Bible even says that a, that a pastor is supposed to be an example to the flock. So what's the example? The example to the flock that was walking in, the f in his faith that you are to duplicate. Jesus called us all to be disciples and to make disciples, to be a disciple and to make disciples. That's to duplicate like we told Adam. When he told Adam, he goes, multiply and replenish the earth. What, multiply more of Adam? No, more of God. 
So what are you multiplying? You have a sphere of some sort of influence around you that people are looking to you. What are you giving to them? That's examination time. What are you giving to them? I've had Christians say this. Well, you know, I, I, you know, don't don't follow me. You know, don't follow me. Just 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 follow Christ. Don't follow. And I understand what they're saying, but what really they're saying is this. I make all kinds of mistakes and I can't trust me and I can't trust nothing about me and so therefore you know what don't 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 look at me what you're doing is you're giving yourself permission not to have any kind of accountability see because when they see you stumble or something say, and then they, they, they call you on it and you say well you know I'm flesh but what does the Bible say to do with flesh Huh? Crucify it. Kill it. So what you're saying, don't follow me because, you know, I, I, I am, I'm still in my flesh. Okay, well, that's a good warning sign. Thank you for warning me. So I, I won't. You know, but now, but now you're stuck with your flesh. See, because what are you going to duplicate? Anybody that you may influence, you're going to duplicate your flesh. So when people know that you're a Christian and you're walking in the flesh, they're going to say, I guess that's the way all Christians walk. They all walk, they're all fleshy. They're all carnal. Which I really, sad to say, 85, 90% of Christians are carnal. Well, well you know, I'll say this is an excuse. It was, you can't, it's hard to live that way. Then why did God reveal mysteries to us? Why did God reveal His Father to us, or him, Himself, through the Holy Spirit? Why, why did He do that? Why did He give us the Holy Spirit when, you know what, you know, we can do it, we can try to do the best we can because, you know, with or without the Holy Spirit, there's, no, there's not going to be much change. No, He gave us the Holy Spirit so we can be a duplicate and also so we can become obedient to what the commission that God, that Jesus had given to the church. Knowing that we can't do it by ourselves. So Paul the Apostle wrote, to the, I believe, to the Corinthian church, and he says, follow me for I follow Christ. See, imitate me for I imitate Christ. So evidently he got into a place where he was pretty, he was pretty bold and strong in his faith with God with his relationship with God. Did we see some of the flaws that Paul had? Sure. But he says, follow me for I follow Christ. You see, you don't follow the man, you follow the, the Christ in the man. Praise the Lord. See, because we do have to give allowance for, because of being a human part of us that we're going to make mistakes. But we thank God for the grace that enables us to come out of it and not be stuck with it. So we don't have to be stuck with some, some area of our life that we, we've been struggling with since childhood and we're struggling with it as adulthood and now you know God and you're still struggling throughout your adult, adult life and stuff and it's like, wow, what, is it, what kind of testimony is that? That shows how God is weak. So now, in the, eye, in the eyes of, of humans, the other people, they look at it, it's, it's just another religion. Christianity is just another religion. All the Christian churches gathered together, just another religion. That's all it becomes. Not power. We should stand out amongst all religions. Because we have, the difference of you know, the religions and us is that we have, a we have a relationship with the creator of the universe of who they are a part of. And the only reason why they're Christian, or let's say this, the reason why all hell hasn't broken loose even though we're experiencing a measure of hell on earth, all hell hasn't turned loose yet, is because there's still Christians now watch. Christians that are living in the spirit and not in the flesh. Hmm. 
See, because there will be a rapture where the Christian that's living in the Spirit can be taken. Because God always does that throughout history. Say, well, what if he doesn't? You know, this, you know, that's all on him. That's on God. But the things that I read in the scripture, it's like, boy, it's pretty consistent. Pretty consistent. And how about the ones that are fleshly? They'll make it. They'll be all right. Except they're going to have to really, you know, because they didn't make their stand when things were okay. You know, they didn't make their stand. You know, they still waddled around. They still fluctuated. They still were lukewarm there. They weren't, they weren't fire hot. They weren't allowing the fire of the Spirit to burn up everything that's flesh. See, when they put a sacrifice in the Old Testament, put a sacrifice, it burned what? It burned flesh. Praise the Lord. See, so what we have to do, the Bible says that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to burn up the flesh. So, so we can adapt to the will of God. But we can't get it all at once. So our mind has to get renewed. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to, do, to help us do that. Now, the major message, get this one. The major message that John the Baptist and Jesus has, what do you think it was? Repent. 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 Okay. The message of repentance, here, let me just give you one part of a definition, is to feel pain or regret that you are sorry for something done wrong to a friend, which in this case, spiritually, would be Jesus, and desire to do what is right, which is obedience. So when we walk in disobedience, we need repentance. Right? You see, so, means this. I need, in order to receive the promises of God, I must walk in obedience. I must walk in it. If I do not walk in obedience, then I live an unrepented life. Now, this is what happens. With an unrepented life, you take yourself off of a position where the gospel can be revealed to you. It is now hidden once again. It is now a mystery to you. So now look at it. If a Christian doesn't know what the will of God is, then there's something that he needs to do in order to position himself to receive that revelation. That is, he needs to repent of something. You know, I don't have to go and say, well, you need to repent of this, 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 this. Or, you know, you go to confession and, and confess this, confess. No, no, no. You need to repent of it. Now, here's what repentance is. Repentance means this, that I am so sorry. I regret. I regret. Not, oh, I got caught. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you just got caught. That's all. That's not repentance. So what's going to happen is that there's a good chance you'll do it again. And again. And again. And again. So repentance is, you know what? I regret it. If I was to do it over again, I wish I had never done it. I would have done things differently. Now, what do you need to do? You need to have a direction because life is a journey. It's a life of faith. So what I need to do is I need to find out what do I need, what, what shall I do now that will keep me away from what I regretted myself or what I've done. What do I need to do? So what I need to do is I need to latch on to a truth from God's Word and get my mind renewed with it so I can start thinking the way God wants me to think. Because God, Bible says, that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power power of love and a sound, well-balanced mind. 
Sicknesses all start from your th mind, from your thinking. This here is all connected to here and our bodies, of our emotions. And so now, what God is after is that. Now, where is the mind located? I'm not talking about the brain. I'm talking in the mind. It's in the heart, which the Bible calls it the uh, S O U, the soul. See, so now we are soul. Jesus comes to save the soul. Now the soul, there's a will. Now God has to get us involved. God can't go and bypass our will and go ahead and say, okay, I'll renew your mind for you. I'll, I'll do it all for you. He already did it. Died on the cross. Now he, he's got to bring us back to what he created us with. And that is the power of will. The power of choice. So you can choose to live for God and dedicate yourself to God, or you can choose not to. You can just go in just part way, and, and, and that's all you're going to get. You're only going to get what you put in. Praise the Lord. Are you getting this? Okay, now let's go. John, chapter 14. John, chapter 14. The Holy Spirit has been given to the obedient. Really? I thought it was given to everybody. No? Now, we got to get, when in order to get saved, you have to, you receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, you receive the Holy Spirit. But you positioned yourself to receive it because you acknowledge what Jesus did and now he releases it to, to start, to start now, to start. It's not complete. But to start the transformation to take place. Remember as scripture says in Romans 12 too, he said don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So now, let me just remind you and see if you know. If you're not being transformed, what's happening? Good. You're conformed. You're being conformed to this world. There's a whole lot, a whole lot of Christian churches in America are being conformed because there's no transformation. When you have religion, religion doesn't transform. When you have a form of godliness, it doesn't transform. When you go through all the, all the, 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 the spiritual things that looks like it's spiritual, and you sing your songs, and you give your tithes and offerings, and, and you hear the message and all this, and you go off, and all, that, that, that doesn't transform. That doesn't transform. So, it, it, so see what's happening. So now, if you're not transformed, even in the church world, and you go out, because we're in this world, we're not of this world, but we're in the world, you're going to get in the world, and now the world is going to conform you. So we have pastors today that are allowing homosexuality to be in leadership. Why? Because there was no transformation. They, they got, they subdued, they bowed down to a, a seducing spirit that the Bible says would happen. So when you're not being transformed, you will be conformed. What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Have you ever run into uh, a, a homosexual that is really, they're nice. In fact, a lot of them. I mean, they're nice, they're cordial, you know, they're, they're, they're respectful. Uh, I mean, they could be a, really a good friend and all. Uh, now, you have to separate it. You separate, that's the one that God loves. That's the one that God is in love with. And you make sure you, you love that person. Okay, but it's the behavior that's going to, that's cursed them, that God has already cursed. You see, so now, what, what is it now? I was going somewhere with this one now. About the, about the Holy Spirit. Oh man, I was going, just left it. Let's go, let's go. I'll come back, they'll come back to me. John chapter 14, verse uh, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Here, obedience releases the Holy Spirit. Obedience releases the Holy Spirit. That's what it was. 
Thank you, Lord. See, the Holy Spirit, let's say with the, homo, the homosexual, why they receive that is because they have, not con they have not transformed. And so there's other things that are coming in, the laws that are being passed, that Christian churches are accepting. And this is what they say. I've heard it through, I ain't going to mention names for nothing, big time person, uh, mega church. And they said, we're just evolving. The word evolve. Now, if I would say the name, man, you would say, whoa, whoa really? And some of you really, probably I've heard him li listen to some of the t t teachings. And good teachings. I mean, motivational teaching, and all that, real good, boom, boom, boom. And, and awesome stuff. But when it, that got me right there. I mean, what, what he's saying in general is good. All the teachings. See, the word doesn't change. Okay, it's still the same. The person ministering the work is still the same. Okay, but that caught me there when he says they're evolving. We're just evolving. What do you mean evolving? No, we're being conformed. We're conforming. They've got to be careful. Because in the same kind of people, pastors, are getting with on talk shows or uh, these, what do you call them? Uh, when they interview, interview them. You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And they're not real strong with different I issues that are on the table that go against the word. You know, they don't come straight out. See, because if they would, they probably wouldn't have them on the show. See, because they're looking for the praise of in the Christian world, but also the praise in the, this world. And the Bible says, whoa, is that? Because Jesus didn't get that. See, he didn't get that. So he wasn't popular with the, with the religious people. You see, so the, the thing is, is especially when you speak truth. And so you have to watch yourself. We have to, we have to watch ourselves that I need to be transformed or I am just going to compromise. There's nothing wrong with it. It's okay. You talk to Christians, and you know what they even say? Christians, just some simple stuff. We think it's simple, but it'll kill you. You know, it's okay for for Christians to drink. Now you've had problems with alcohol. It's okay for Christians to drink. It's okay. You're not going to hell if you smoke. You know, you're not going to hell. You know, it's like who said that? What gospel you come up with? <laughs> You're defying the whole, you, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. Would you come into any kind of church building and just go and have a party and just drink in there? And, and then be able to, oh, that's you know, that's the house of God. The temple, your temple is the house of God. Uh, he says, respect your dad. Ah, here, right here. He says, if you destroy this temple, God will destroy you. Yeah. It's like, I mean, we don't, we don't, we bypass so many things. I don't see how some pastors can bypass those things. But see, you do when you don't, when you don't transform. And transformation can only take place where the Holy Spirit is welcomed. Because we can't transform ourselves. Praise the Lord. Now, I teach on anger management at the mission. But you know what? In true life, you can't manage yourself. You can't manage your own anger. You need a transformation. And get rid of, of the old man. See, all we're doing is caressing the flesh. And the Bible says that the enemy, the devil, is like the roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he devours flesh. So if you're over there trying to control your flesh and tame your flesh, then he's going to devour your flesh because you're still being dictated by your flesh. We're supposed to be led by the Spirit. See, freedom doesn't come. Oh, I got control. I got it. I got control. I didn't get mad all week. I didn't get mad all month. You know? Uh, really? Are you taking pride over yourself? No. The Bible says, whom the Son says free is free indeed. It's been years since I've lost it. Now, anger can come, and, and it, it comes and goes, but it's not the kind of anger that I just lose it, and then say, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? No. I mean, we may lose it at times when you say something that was off. He says, oh, okay, you know what? 
I got to put a watch on my mouth. I just got, I got to watch it. I'm sorry. Immediately grab a hold of that. Don't let the enemy take you, take you for a ride. Grab a hold of that and just allow, and, and continue to allow the Holy Spirit to work, to work, to work. Because you, we will experience as you're going through the process. But don't give your, your flesh permission because I'm what I'm getting ready to say. We will go through a lot of falling. Falling down, tripping, just get up. You're going to trip, get up, trip, get up, trip, get up. Don't get tired over that. It's okay. God never gets tired. You got the blood. The blood never stops. The blood keeps flowing. So when you get trip, get up. Oh, I messed up. Oh, okay. Just repent. Repentance keeps us in a position for the Holy Spirit to continue to work through us. That's why grace is there. Grace gives me the ability to walk a godly life. So even if I trip and I repent, I'm still holy. According to the Bible, grace. I didn't lose my holiness. I didn't lose my righteousness. I didn't lose my sainthood. We're saints. I didn't lose my discipleship. I didn't lose it. I just got up and continued and, and repent and just make sure I get back on path again. So don't beat yourself. Now I said all that to not give your flesh permission that when you fall, it says, or just before you're ready to fall or get tempted, he says, well, God, I know you're going to forgive me, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Then I'll ask for forgiveness later. No, that's, that, oh, man, you're playing. With, you're, you're playing with the blood of Jesus, and that's not, that's not cool at all. That's very dangerous. Dangerous. So I wouldn't do that. I would take, I would take advantage of the of the grace and the mercy. And I, I'll take it all in order to help me that when I do fall, I can get back up again. If I do fall, I can get right back up again. I don't have to go through days or or hours or days of, of being condemned. I, you got to get out of that condemnation state. Amen. Yeah. So now, the so Holy Spirit has been given to us, to the obedient. Now, if you look at verse 15, chapter 14, verse 15, says this. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. Notice, and, conjunction. When you love me and keep my commandments, that's proof of love. Then I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans or comfortless. I will come to you. How will he come to us? How does, how does, now Jesus is talking here. He says, I will come to you. How would he come to us? Through the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is activated in our life and is living in us and changing us, it's Jesus. It's Jesus doing it. Look at verse, look at chapter 16, the same book. Verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he would take of mine and declare it to you. Do you see that? All things has been given to the Son. But you notice there? That he will take all that has been given to me and he will declare it to you. The measure of the mystery of the gospel being revealed to you is determined by your position that you remain in of obedience. 
Because notice, when we disobey, the Bible says this too, that we grieve the Holy Spirit because He's excited to bring the change because that is His purpose on this earth, to bring change, to prepare us for heaven. So we're not trying to get to heaven. He's trying to get heaven in us. That's what he's trying to do. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we live on this earth from heaven. We're not of this world, the Bible says. Jesus said that about us. We're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. The same was with him. So he's putting us in the same position as himself. Well, how can that be? Well, Ephesians 2.6 says, he says that he has raised us up together. And many sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So our obedience will keep us in that position of sonship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sons and daughters of the living God. See, when one doesn't obey, let's say even a spouse. If a spouse, one spouse doesn't obey, the other spouse better obey. Otherwise, you have the devil walking in. He'll, you give him access. You give him authority. You give him all power that's been given to you. So that's why I've had those that in the through years of ministry. This is why, you know, help me to get my husband or, my, you know, help me to get my wife. That she be in there. I mean, it, it, why? Because it'll be easier for me. But then what happens? So they miss. One misses. So the other one starts missing. One doesn't come for a while. The other one's barely coming, barely coming. And finally drops out. Why? You've been influenced by a demonic spirit. Because you're supposed to be in a place, in a position where you can experience the transformation. But now you got distracted with what's going on and it's gotten a little, it's gotten a little heavy at home. It's gotten a little uh, conflicting at home. Now, how are you going to stand if somebody comes to you and points a gun to give up Christ, you give up real fast because you get a little trial and you're ready to give up. Oh man, I'm really going through it, man. I'm just ready to throw in the towel. Whoa. What for? You're, you're, it's like, I mean, uh, uh, the, the heart of a fighter, this is what God wants to build in us. The heart of a fighter. We fight and fight and fight because, you know why? They know. See, nobody gets into a ring and say, I'm going to fight, I hope I win. No, they go in there and say, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. You say, but, but what if? No, no, no. They don't live in what if. See, because they live in what ifs, they've already lost. Before even getting in, they've already lost. You see, and that's what happens. We, it gets a little tough. You see, unless you have the heart of a fighter, which comes from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit says, be strong in the Lord. Obviously, we can't be strong in ourselves. Because we will say, what if, what if. But it says, be strong in the Lord. There is no what is with the Lord. It's all faith. That's what the Holy Spirit reveals to us. That's the mystery that's being revealed to us that we have access to. So as we go and we build ourselves and we build our faith in that, Holy Spirit reveals it, reveals it. All we see is the bigness of God. When so when you see a problem, you see the bigness of God. So if my husband or if my wife or somebody I, I look up to is now following God, you know what? It don't matter. I'm going to follow God. See, I'm going to follow God. You see, and so now you make that decision. Holy Spirit, boom, he's in there. And he's working in you. And he gives you strength. And then you, and you, as you're going through it, you're looking at yourself. It's like, wow, I never, I never thought I could do that. That's right. You couldn't do it by yourself. It's the Holy Spirit doing it and helping you. He's the helper. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
I thank God. See, that's, that's the reason why a lot of Christians don't live in victory. Because they don't allow the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that He leads us into triumph. So it's, it's that we have to have the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We're supposed, if we're not led of the Spirit, then we're led of the flesh. You're led by something. And if we're led by the flesh, then we're led by what goes on in the world. That is a miserable place to be and then, and then say, I'm a Christian. Well, that's hard. Oh my God, that is hard. So then, and then, you know, what some Christians will do. They just say, okay, well, if I'm not a Christian, I might as well just go, oh yeah, really? Really? That's like going and you're, by, you're, in, the, you're in a boat and you see these great white sharks swimming around. He says, forget it, we're trapped here. I might as well just throw myself in the water and just get eaten up, get it over with. You know, and it's like, that's what you're giving up to. I'm just giving up. I mean, you're still in the boat. You still got hope. Right. You know, come on. You know, we, we need to get a backbone, a spiritual backbone, so we can overcome. Because we need to measure up to what the Bible says is possible. Because remember, what you read in the Bible, and it sounds good. Yeah, it leads me to triumph. Yeah, I'm more than a conqueror. I've been raised together with him. I've been forgiven. I'm his son. You're his daughters. You know, whatever. You know, I'm in that position. And, and if God is, God is for me, who could be against me? So now, if I don't feel any of those things that I'm reading, that means I'm being dictated by my flesh I'm being led by the wrong spirit and all it takes is a decision to acknowledge it and repent of it and then turn around and say okay I need to get back in this and here then I need to follow up and, and my, get, raise my standard to this to find out okay now then the Holy Spirit gets, is in there he's excited he's in there okay now you see this you see that okay now here let me help you now but, but wait you need to choose. You need to make a decision. From your soul, you make a decision. Now, are you going to choose to throw in the towel, or are you going to choose to obey? So, I obey. And you get supernatural strength that comes from within. You can't, and I've, I've been there many, many times, you can't understand it. You can't. You can't, it's not something that is, is taught, it's something that is caught. You experience it. You can't break it down and say, okay, this is how the Holy Spirit is going to do it, and this is what you're going to feel, and this, you can't do it. You just have to obey. So when you're in a, you're in a place where you are, I'll believe it when I see it, I'll believe it when I feel it. I'll believe it when I hear it. I'll believe it. I says, okay. Well, if God wants me to get it, then he'll come down and then show me. He already did. He came through Jesus. Then he left and he says, I leave you not comfortless. I leave you not orph orphans. You're not an orphan. And so many Christians walk around like they're orphans without a daddy. And you got a daddy that created the, he the heavens and the earth. You got that daddy right here. Why would you walk around for forsaken? Well, nobody likes me. Nobody loves me. You know, nobody invites me to so and so and this and that. And they get all hurt. Wow, really? You've already been invited. You have the door. Jesus is knocking at your door. Come on, let's have, let me let me remind you of some stuff here. Spirit of God, Jesus said, He'll bring all things to your remembrance. So when you're going through it, hey, come on, let me do it. Come on, let me help. I'll help you out. Here's our, here's the Holy Spirit. I'm not gonna leave you comfortless. <coughs> Praise the Lord, and the Spirit of comfort just comes right in. Hallelujah. Isn't that good stuff? So, so what here? Let me let me close. Let me wrap this up here. Give God a clap offering. Come on, give Him a clap offering. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Turn to one more verse in First Peter chapter two. I didn't finish it, but it's okay. First Peter chapter two, verse one. The believer must desire God above everything else in life for this to work. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, 
in all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious or that the Lord is good got salvation I had a taste the day do you remember the day you received Jesus you had a taste of the goodness of God that he wiped away everything that you had done in your life that was not God. He wiped it away. That's the goodness of God. What does the goodness of God do as you keep focused on the goodness of God? The goodness of God will lead you to what? Repent. Repentance. So you will be quick to repent because of how good God is. And as a baby desires milk, so are we to be the same way. To desire, the same desire as a baby has is to desire that. Now, Many of you, including myself, have gone, we experienced God, we had the fire of God, and we were telling people about Jesus. I know when I did, I just started telling people, I went out there and just started telling people, I went back to some friends that I, they saw me on the street and saw that I would minister to them and all this. And, and, and it, it was like, and I was reading the Word, and I was reading the Word, and it's like, oh, wow, wow. But somewhere along the line, you waver. But if I look back at where I waver, if you notice, the fire is no longer there where you waver. It's like, oh man, you know, you're more interested in other stuff. And you waver. And I've been through different waivers. I mean, how many have been to some waivers? You know, you've been through some waivers. And you get, you get back on track and then you go, you go on for a while and also you get another wave. And then you get back on track and you go for another wave. And you get back on track and you go for another wave. And finally you get to a place where you say, you know what, I'm tired of these waves. He's waving, man. You know, this wave, I'm tired. And I did come to that point in my life. It was 1998. I came to that point. I, I finally just like, forget it. I, this wave Wavering stuff is hard because when you waver and you try to and you, and you try to get back again, and that's hard. And, and you know, you hear the preaching the word and say you gotta have the fire of God, you gotta be hungry for God, and it's like, oh my God, I'm not hungry. You know, I don't have I don't I don't have that real desire in there, and I feel guilty because you know, and some people who actually not go to church because they hear the message like that. You need to be hungry for God. You gotta be hungry for God. And you say, what's wrong with me? He says, be patient with yourself be patient because the Holy Spirit is working to get all that garbage that during the wavering times he started attaching things on you and this stuff is coming to me right now by the Spirit he started attaching things and then so what happens is that when you get out of it and you get moving towards, you know, it's all by faith because you don't feel it. It's like faith, faith, faith. But now what's happening is that now the fire starts to get turned up. Okay, it starts to get turned up because the Bible says, draw near to God, draw near to Him, He'll draw near to you. All right, so the Bible says in Hebrews 12, I believe, it says that God is, our God is a consuming fire. <laughs> so now, He starts showing you, he, start, I know, he did it with me, He starts showing you why you fell off. He starts showing you what to do to avoid it. So he wouldn't say, well, you did this, 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 and now what are you going to do about it? No, no. He would show me. I, I'm going to tell you, he went, I went through it even in 98. I went through that. He would show me. He goes, okay, son, this is what you did wrong. This is what you need to do. Then he showed me something else. He wouldn't show you all at once because they would get you bummed out. Just a little at a time as you walked with him. God is so good. He's a good God. And then he would show me. And then he would say, okay, son, here's another thing. 
right, here, here, here's what you need to do. He always gave me the solution. And I'll tell you, I went through ways that the presence of God just hit me, and I'd be breaking and crying before Him. And because He was just dropping inside of me, just dropping and cleansing me, and dropping and dropping. And then eventually, as time went on, fire was there. It's like, yeah, I'll never go back, never go back, I never go back, no, no, no. That waving stuff is, is yeah, that's not for me. That's not for me. It's not for anybody, really. And I just got tired of it. See, when you go through the waving, you go out, you go through the waving, go out, and all that, uh, you're not sick and tired yet. <laughs> you still like what you do when you go through the wave. So what you need to do is that when you get to the place where you get out of the wave, you need to find out and ask the Holy Spirit, identify why I'm, I keep going into the waving part. See, so that way you can get start working on it and get that taken out. So when consuming fire comes, it starts burning. Because remember, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming to you who's mightier than I, who's able to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's what he does. So have you noticed that when you get close to God, also, you, you, little by little, you start seeing things in your life. Oh, God, i got to get this out. i got to get this out. And then you get closer. You get, oh, here's another thing. And then as you get closer, ah, oh, shoot. But see, the thing is, you're getting close. Now what you're being, you're being tried with fire. And see, all that other gunk is coming off and now you're starting to see more of a reflection so as you begin to see you read the word read the word it's like you see Jesus and then you're so much in, in having the encounters with with Jesus that when you turn around people see Jesus on you you're not trying to be so if you have to convince people that you're you're changing then you're not changing See, if you had to convince people that, you know, uh, th there's no love, and, I, I, and, and I'm not being loved, you know, or you try to convince people that I have love, but then you get upset. I have love, but you get upset. See, uh, then, then what you need to do is just go back and stay there until you really get love. Because love, God's love, only comes through intimacy. See, our love fades. The intimacy of God's love continues. Sometimes you may think that God's not just, but you know what? When love is part of you, God's just in anything, even if it doesn't make sense. You see, because God's not waiting to, for our approval. Right. He's already, He's already made up in His mind what it's going to be because He has to back up His word. And so all he's doing is sent the Holy Spirit to become a reflection of his character. And it only comes through the mystery being revealed to us of the Word and find out all the things that we have available at our disposal for us to take hold of. So anything that you come against in life, that there is an antidote to it from the word but that's why the bible says search the scriptures search it out what you want is somebody just to preach it to you teach it to you and that would be easier no 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 they'll preach it and teach you let you know it's there now you got to seek it for yourself see because god died jesus died for you and i individually Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God a clap offering. Hallelujah.